Hey, I'm Matt Hudgens. He's Dave Mulvaney, and this is Profitability MD. Dave, how you doing today, buddy? Matt, doing well. How about you? Man, life is good. Summer's good. in full swing. Uh, just loving it. Good. Matt, I have a question for you. What you got? Why do people hire you? Why do people hire you? That is awesome. Let's get right into it today. I love it. Let's do it. So, it's, it boils down to a few basics. You know, they know, like, and trust you, and the last guy they saw, right? That's one of the, the basic ones that I say. But really, when you think about it, there, there are all kinds of industry stats, depending on the industry, but, but it's similar. It is peace of mind. You can solve my problem. Give me peace of mind. Let's just say solve a problem. You can solve my problem. And then number two, you have a history of dealing with people like me in my situation and solving people like me. I mean, solving their issue, solving their problem, right? So we'll call that the history of solving a problem for someone like me. They, they, uh, we could call that association with others. And that's why testimonials can be so important um, because exactly. it says, you, you know, because a lot of what we do, I mean, as business owners today, we're dealing with let's just say strangers in a way and um, trust right. is so important in a marketing relationship that if you're dealing with strangers, you got to have some testimonials and those testimonials have to be, if you're, if you're, if you're talking to physical therapists um, and you've helped other physical therapists, those testimonials of other physical therapist, physical therapists that perhaps they know will make them associate, Hey, they solved Fred's problem. Maybe they can help me. And if you can make them believe that on a, on a, on an emotional level, they'll trust you. So. Right. And, and that gets, they'll do the business with you. Right? I have a great example today. Uh, another HVAC seems like I always have that example, but I had an HVAC with the upstairs unit, right? So my upstairs, it's really cold in the master bedroom, but the two front bedrooms are hot. Okay. So I had heard that maybe you can cut, two extra ducts and blow more air in the two windows up front. So I'll bring the HVAC guy over. Let's take a look if that's a possibility. Um, if that's not a possibility, so again, I got a problem. Front two bedrooms are too hot. You tell me the solution, right? So it's, this goes into, I have a history. Hey, we've dealt with people like this in your situation where two of the rooms were hotter than the others. And here are the things we do. We could cut two vents and put extra air flowing in there. However, that's going to take away some air from your back bedrooms. And then it's, is your unit strong enough to do that? In which case, case mine is not. So, hey, here's one solution. We blow more air in the front. You got a big enough unit. That's perfect. That costs whatever, 500, 800,000 bucks, whatever that dollar is. If it isn't, the second solution is you buy a bigger air conditioned unit upstairs, you know, more whatever, BTUs, BTUs. right? Yep. Time so instead of a, two ton, you need a three ton, or instead of a two and a half, you need a three and a half ton. And then you would just leave the same ductwork and we would just blow it into the same four rooms that you got. Or a third solution is those ductless air conditioning units. We could put one of those units in the front of the house and just go to the two bedrooms up front. Those are our three solutions. Hey, I've dealt with this many a times before. I would hate to do solution number one, where we cut the ducts and the rest of the house gets hot and you get all mad with me. I do that for you, but I don't think that's right in your situation. I've had a history of dealing with people like you. Well, I could put the ductless air conditioning unit up front, but there's, you know, pros and cons of that. What I would do if I were in you and what I've done for others in your situation is it's just cheaper, better, faster, quicker, just to buy more tonnage, use the same duct work. I can have that done in a day. What do you think? Right. And that's literally almost the speech the guy gave me. Right. So what's he doing? He, he's giving solving my problem. I got two rooms that are too hot, two rooms that are awesome. He could give me the cheap solution, but Hey, I've dealt with people like you in your situation, mm -hmm. a house this big, you know, that would work for a house that was X square feet, but a house that's this square feet. I'm not sure it's going to work. Right. So he's building his trust all along the way because he solved problems like this before he's seen a million hot spots, Right. So I bought the bigger unit and that starts on Monday. <laughs> so now let's take that to a, um, yeah, so you bought the bigger unit naturally, but 
that HVAC contractor, he could have had, um, did he come out or do that over the phone with you? That came out. That came out. So I'm just going to use an example of he could have created a marketing piece, a video, if you will, where you could have went to his website or actually you could have done a Google search in your area. And if he had done a video and um, optimized the video to that search, um, which was um, I have two rooms that are hot and one yeah, that hot is spots cool. in my house. And, yep. all, and all of those questions could have been answered so that by the time you literally picked up the phone, you'd say, hey, I've got uh, two hot spots and I watched your, your video and I, I think I'm, I'm ready to order a larger unit. And he could have said, okay, can you, you know, you know, whatever, I'll have somebody out. And he could have eliminated all of that in between and still created the same credibility. Right. Uh, and, and it's funny you said, we mentioned this in a past episode, we could have been his marketing message could have been I fix hot spots in houses, right? Or I fix hot spots in bigger houses. I, you know, I fix hot spots in Buckhead. I fix hot spots in Atlanta. But that could have been his marketing message would have talked right to me. You're exactly right. Then he could have had the video, right? Because you're exactly right. It basically boils down to how many square feet you have and then how many tonnage is up there, which I could have clawed up in the attic myself, looked at the tonnage, I could have calculated roughly the square feet of my upstairs, you know, the four bedrooms or whatever in the bathrooms. And I could have like come to the same conclusion myself. Well, basically for X thousand square feet, the math equation says I need three and a half tons. I only have two. All right. I, so now you're getting to. I could have sold myself by watching his video. You, right? We have, we've just, we've covered so much and I want to slow you down for a minute because yeah, there, yeah. there's so much that in, in what just happened. So you took an HVAC contractor who they do, they do compressors, they do air handlers and filters and all the different things they do. They, you know, they specialize in and they, they got the big long list, right? right? But instead, so as you're talking, I'm, I'm picturing a billboard. I'm sitting on I-85 and I see a billboard that says, got, got hot spots in your Buckhead house? We fix yes. hot spots. And yes. So um, it, what target market 100% target he doesn't have to tell all the other things he or she doesn't have to tell all the other things they do now we exactly went right. complete niche marketing yep and and th that's high margin because if they're if they're putting in a, a new outdoor unit that's that's yep. big margin they're, i mean there's probably 500 dollars labor and probably 12 to 1800 dollars of profit on the unit depending on the size of the unit it's not that much sure, sure. No, I understand. Unit. but the point is total niche marketing you can complete the message in like under 10 words so yes. that's the type of stuff that dream billboards are made of when you can complete a message to your target market <laughs> in in 10 words or less you have hit a, a bonus jackpot and any if you're an hvac and you're watching this video this is the best free advice you're ever going to get <laughs> um, that billboard could be a facebook ad right yeah. same thing Click here to fix your hotspots, three ways to fix your hotspots. Then you go through the example that we just talked about, you know, cut new vents, separate unit, uh, you know, ductless unit, HVA, you know, bigger unit. Boom, boom, boom. Here's how you calculate it. You know, let us know if you'd like so, right? Doesn't even have to be a big sales calculating it, I will, I will tell you that um, in the past 15 years, um, HVAC manufacturers, air conditioning equipment manufacturers have removed all the labels that tell you how many tons of air there is actually in the, they don't want you to know because they don't, right. I don't know why it's just like, it's a secret, you know, that's uh, another video you can make. Here's yeah. how to find out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it, depending on your brand, it's the certain letter in the serial number, just like, right. I, like the 10th number in your VIN, in your VIN on your vehicle, the 10th number tells you what year it is. It used wow. to be that way. It might be the 10th okay. and 11th number now because we've moved on. But the 10th number in your VIN on your vehicle tells you the year that the vehicle is. So, but that's a secret, right? I mean, um, so, so here we are. We're, we've taken a HVAC contractor, niche market. And yep. marketing so you, message. Why yep. do people hire you? It boils down to ultimately your marketing message has to make them um, – they want to know you. They want to like you. They want to trust you. I mean, it, it boils down to they know, like, and trust you. That's important. But how do you get them to know, like, and trust you? You've, you've got to make them believe that you are an expert 
and that you can solve their problem. And when you do that effectively and you reach them on an emotional level, this is the key is if you can reach them on an emotional level in some way, shape or form, I don't know how emotional um, HVAC is. Uh, it might get more emotional if you can talk about, uh, you know, your, your, let's say your master bedroom's hot, the opposite of yours. Right, right. Your wife's always on your butt, you know, because yeah. you're, you're not right. getting this taken care of. Like, it's your fault. Like, you're, I mean, you know, but you, you can reach well, people. Well, one of the things that you said reminded me is, and I forget where we heard this, is if you can articulate your, your prospect's problem better than they can. It's as if the, you read my mind. It's as if a, you read my mind. Hopkins, so you, one of the earliest uh, copywriters, um, he, he actually talks about that very thing is, is, is reach um, into your client and explain their problem as if you're, like you're, as if you're them. And if you do that well enough, they'll, they'll think you are them. They'll think, how did you know that about me? Right, right. And, um, that's good marketing when you can get there. Too many people don't think about this. They write up a brochure and it's all based upon specifications. Let's, let's face it, Mac, Matt, uh, Matt, if the, um, if he gave you the specifications on the, uh, what was it called? The window unit or what? Not window unit, but yeah, the ductless, the ductless. ductless unit. If he yeah. gave you specifications on the ductless unit, he gave you specifications on your, on the unit you have now and specifications um, on, on the new unit they're going to put in and said, well, why don't you make a decision? You'd be like, dude, what? I, I don't know what all this means. <laughs> this is, this is, not, this is exactly what we're talking about, right? So that's the exact conversation I had today with a, with a coaching client that's in the financial services business. And that's exactly, they asked the prospect, they've had a meeting, um, they've asked for some extra, extra special reports. And I said, well, why do you think they asked for those special reports? You're going to give those special reports. They don't know what they mean. Asset allocation and risk factors and yada, yada, yada. They don't know what that means. Why are they asking you for that information? They're asking for that information because they're uncertain. They want to feel comfort and clarity. They think they're supposed to ask for those. So pre-frame it, you know, whatever, Caldini, the persuasion. Yep. She's going, it's one of my clients, she's going to the meeting tonight. I said, you go in there and you say, you know, you've done a great job doing X, Y, Z. You're living on your means. You've accumulated wealth. You're complimenting them, right? And then you're saying, I'm going to show you your persuasion. I'm going to show you these reports. We're going to walk through them. But now it's going back to, literally, I have a history of helping successful people like you navigate the complexities of retirement, right? Whatever the word... Gosh, that's exactly what I need. I'm worried. I help people like you make smart decisions about their money in retirement, right? Speaking their language before, because she doesn't know what she's going to see when she sees his reports, right? So yeah. it's, it's speaking, like you said, you show me those things, the next tonnage and thing, I'm going to be like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, right? I don't understand that. And, and, right. and but if you speak to their understand. problem, and why do they hire you? They hire you because you gave them peace of mind. You solved their problem. Let's go back to, they solved the problem. The problem is they're worried about their retirement. They're worried about their hotspots in the house. And then you articulate it in a way. I have a history of dealing with people like you. I've dealt with houses with hotspots in your neighborhood. I've dealt with people, successful business owners, successful retirees like you in your situation. Boom. And you're going to, that's exactly solve a problem. You've got a history dealing with me. No, no, like can trust you. You solve my problem. You're in. And, and, and look, you get you, there are a whole lot of people who, this is important, that there's a whole lot of people who have the problem. But that's why good marketing, if you, if you do the marketing right, and what we're talking about is a multi-step marketing. Let's just say you did a Facebook ad. And, yeah, messaging. Yeah. You did a Facebook ad that said, you know, you uh, got hotspots in your Buckhead home, we Watch fix this. hotspots. Then they go and they land on your, they go to your landing page and let's say then you have a video that explains what you just went through before. Now, yep. what that video is doing is it's explaining to them that they're going to have to buy a bigger unit, okay? Now, now at that point, almost every homeowner on the planet knows that's going to come with a, a four-figure price tag at least, okay? We all know that if you own a home. 
So, you know, it might be 3,000, might be 2,000. I don't know exactly what it is, but every, every homeowner on the planet that lives in Buckhead, if we're targeting Buckhead houses, then they're going to know, okay, this can be like two to 5,000 bucks. Guess what's not going to happen if that person doesn't have two to $5,000? They're not going to call you. So now the market, when they finally pick up the phone and call you, or at that point, you, at near the end of the video, you have a little pop-up that says, get $100 off. Yeah, financing available. Yeah, right. and financing available. And you can even have them fill out the financing form right there. I mean, now we're, now we're getting into total lead generation. But get $100 off this unit if you do what? Click, give me your name and email set address. Appointment. And now yeah. what happens, even if you don't set the appointment, you know they got hotspots. And so you're gonna have a series of email that's gonna talk to those people about hotspots. Why? Because now you know you have the right target audience, but they might not have the money. So now you're gonna get the message in front of them when they're ready. So this, the whole thing is um, you're not only solving their problem, you're, you're narrowing the focus to the people who have the money to spend with you. If you want $3 yep. million dollar to $5 million dollar clients in the financial services business, well, you want to weed out anybody who doesn't have the three to $5 million. You want, you want them. And right. how do you do that? Right. Well, That's well, the hardest thing is finding those audience, right? That's the hardest thing is where are the people with the money, right? Where yeah. are the people with the hot spots? Where are the people? Again, we talked about this HVAC before, because there are other strategies like along these lines that we target houses that want to upgrade their HVAC. Yeah. Units that are 20 years old, 15 years old, so we can target neighborhoods, you know? Time to upgrade your AC unit. Hey, is that, do you have hot spots? Time to upgrade your AC unit. And it's an, and now we're targeting an older neighborhood in Atlanta, right? Or whatever city, right? That's and that's again, a different message name. for that neighborhood. You know, it works. And I don't, uh, but what I see most of the time is uh, different people, they sell coupons. Yeah. Coupons are great if they're the thing that, that pushes them over the edge. Right. But you got to find out if they're right first. Okay. I mean, and that's what we're talking about is getting yep. that right. Qualifying first. your lead, right? Yeah. yeah. Qualifying your lead. Yeah. Pre-qualifying them to the point where then when they finally, if, if they pick up the phone and call you, they know they're going to be cutting a big check. That's what you want. I mean, ultimately the best marketing in the world makes people pull out their credit card and say, pick me. That's right. what good marketing does. Right. And so why do people hire you? Because they trust you on, on, a, on an emotional level that you're going to solve their problem or make their life better. And when yeah. you get there, you, you'll have all the clients you'd ever want on the planet. And this is so funny because you can apply this. I just use the HVAC model as an example. You could apply this to landscape, you know, cutting your lawn, right? So same kind of thing. Uh, a lot of people in the neighborhood have lawn services. Okay. So, uh, you could change hot spots to a different word. Got brown spots? There you go. I'm talking about your lawn. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you right. can make comedy out of that one. Right. Exactly right. Um, uh, same thing you could say, uh, you know, maybe that messaging could be because it's your, you know, a teenage teenager or a college, you know. Well, that, well, let's go to marketing messages, right? You know, two guys in a truck, right? Instead of hiring a big moving company. Two guys in a truck. That's all I I'm need. I'm in the apartments. You've probably seen this one lately. Uh, there's a new company out, College Hunks, uh, moving junk. Removing junk. Yes. Yeah. I yes. mean, they're probably not college guys. I mean, if you've ever seen movers, they're like, they, I mean, they it most might have started as two college guys, but they're not college guys anymore. Yeah. yeah I they totally they got out of college and they're making, they're making a ton of money because they've got a really solid uh, marketing message. Right. Uh, I got, there's a guy here in Atlanta. He calls himself the overeducated painter. So apparently he was a college graduate and he's a painter and he's a really good painter and he's really diligent and really thorough. Um, and so a lot of the, the, you know, the referral networks are refer, you know, who wouldn't want the overeducated painter? Yeah, because <laughs> that's a great message in and itself. He's I don't know good. how that message applies to painting, but um, it builds a level of Credibility, I guess. Credibility, trust, knowledge. He probably knows what he's doing. He's probably a responsible individual, right? And it turns out he is. They, they, literally, he does a great job and all that kind of – Yeah, if his marketing is geared uh, to when you go there, um, it delivers an intellectual message on why 
paint is a certain way, why it lasts a certain amount of time. Tell me how, okay, if you're going to be the overeducated painter, tell me how you're going to um, solve my problem, which is I'm tired of having my house painted uh, every six years or, or what have you. And you, you, you might explain why certain paints break down faster and why you should never buy from the major uh, big supply house. I mean, I'm just making, I'm just like brainstorming. That's also his message, overeducated or diligent. Say that had again, a man, broke up a little there. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm getting unstable again. Are we back? You're back. Yeah. Okay. I was saying his message is not the paint itself. It's the diligence of the job. I'm going to do a good job and not spill paint on your hardwood floors. There you go. That's what he means by overeducated is I'm not educating you on the paint itself. I'm just a very diligent and do a good quality work. And so if you ever had a bad paint job, I do a good paint job. That's what he, that's the message. His overeducation is on relaying is quality of service. I'm not some fly by night guy. I'm quality guy. I do quality work. And, and I think if you're in the painting business, I'm going to give it like in the painting business, your message should be geared around why you shouldn't do it yourself. I really think that painters miss this mark because so many people, um, I just, I, one of my Facebook um, uh, friend on Facebook, I saw he, he's like, how do you get paint off of hardwood floors? And <laughs> I'm like, that's well, awesome. His wife right. spilled a can of paint, I'm, and I'm like, well, it's latex, right? It's inside. It's got to be latex. So it comes off with soap and water, dude. I mean, it, and he was like all mad, and then I'm like, it's latex. It's, it's going to come right off. But, but that's a perfect reason. What's, why do people paint their house themselves? Because they have a problem. They need their house painted. Right. But, but the reality is they're trying to save money, but what's their time worth? Yeah. If you can, if you can go into their time value, get into um, what happens when you spill, what happens when you, you know, ruin a piece of furniture or carpet. I mean, you can go into all these things and too many people, they just want to say, hey, hey, I'm a painter, you know? Well, I'll even go like, like it could be, like I like your, your uh, lawnmower repair guy you talked about. It could be, here's how you paint your house. But, but you make it so complex. Gosh, you really got to get around the molding and you really got to sand it down before you paint it so it sticks. And it's going to be, damn, that sounds difficult. I don't want to do that. I'm going to hire him to do it, right? It is difficult. Right, to do a quality job. I'll even use, you know, being the golf nut that I am, it's, you know, there are videos on how to change your golf grips, right? Which, which I used to do all the time myself. And now it's like, well, heck, it's just the value of time. Quicker, easier, you know, like faster. Twenty-five dollars just to change the grips. I, I mean, I just hand my clubs off and have them do. That's it. What I, right, exactly right. Which is, you teach me how to do it myself, but I uh, I don't have the time or the wherewithal to do it. So here, you take it. You take it for me, right? So I could do it. So a lot of what we do, you're a painter. You're the outsourced solution, right? You're the lawn guy. You're the outsourced solution, right? I could mow my lawn. I don't want to mow my lawn. I could paint my house. I don't want to paint my house, right? There are certain things I couldn't do the HVAC, right? Sure. I can change my golf grips, but I don't want to change my golf grips, right? So a lot of things, it's, again, thinking back to what am I? I am the outsourced solution for X, Y, Z, right? And that's your messaging, like you said. Hey, I know you can paint yourself, but so let me show you how you could and all the difficulties that there are involved in that. And you'll be like, oh, gosh, I don't want to do it. Uh, I know you could X, Y, Z. Even talk about our coaching, right? I know you could do it yourself, but let me help you do it quicker, faster, easier. And I've done it before for a hundred people like you. Right. And it's, and, and it's exactly what I think is the time we, so now we have five minutes. You and I are going to, no, I was going to say, is this the time for us to talk about this? You and I are going to be doing an event upcoming and the event is, is going to be structured in such a way that we're, we're not only going to show somebody how to make, 15 times what they spend to get in the event. And we're going to show them how to do that within inside of 60 days of attending that event. But we're going to help them create marketing based around their business so they can attract their ideal client. And the value in that is, it, it is going to be a hundred times what they spend. Because you'll have something that will work long-term. And once you know how to do it, then you can make the wheel turn faster and faster and faster. And that's what people miss. 
I, I think too many people miss the boat when it comes to coaches because they think they're trying to save money and do it themselves. But that costs so damn much money to learn on your own. Trial and error in business is stupid. When there's people out there who will show you how you can make money quicker and make less mistakes short term. Oh, ab ab absolutely. And, and I always draw the, 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 the best golfers in the world have a golf coach. Gary Woodland just won the U.S. Open. He's got a golf coach and a mental coach and a physical trainer. He might have some other coaches, right? One of my, one of my clients, um, this is in my, one of my LED company. One of my clients is a very wealthy accountant. He's, a, 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 he's a, uh, an attorney with an with a, a accounting uh, minor. And he's got a CPA license, but they own apartment complexes all over the country. That being said, his golf coach is Phil Mickelson's golf coach. Okay. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So, you know, when you have money, you can hire whatever coach right, you right, want. Right, but right. the point is this guy's great at golf. I mean, he, he's trying to tweak his swing and I'm like, dude, I'd like your worst swing. I'd take that. And, but that's the point is when you want to be better at something, you hire a coach, somebody who's, experience that what you're trying to accomplish and it'll make you better at whatever it is you're trying to doing trying to do we i mean we help people be more prosperous in their business i mean that's why we should call the show profitability md md for matt and dave but if you want to make more money in your business why screw around i mean make more money take time off have more free time enjoy life pay less taxes all the above right yeah so it's funny the uh and I, like I mentioned before, I'm, I'm doing my golf lessons again. And why do I do that? Uh, I'm a pretty good low single-digit handicapper. I just want a second set of eyes looking over my shoulders. I know what I should be doing. I kind of need help doing it. Or I know what I should be doing, but, you know, sometimes I get off track. Right? Well, you know, it's funny you say that because in your head, when you're swinging the golf club, I know. And I'm thinking this, I'm doing exactly what you're, and, and a golf coach looks at it and you go, no, you're not doing exactly yeah. what I said. You're actually real, real, right. And, and they show you and you're like, I didn't feel that. But once right. they show you, then you start feeling it, it turn it brings out a muscle memory. Your brain is a muscle. At least I think it is. Um, but it has, it creates memories based upon uh, what you learn and when I, I like to talk about struggling businesses, people don't always think about, okay, there's a lot of times you're struggling is because you're doing old habits too often. And sometimes you need someone to, to say, Hey, well, what are you doing? And, and like yeah. you talk about activity inventory and you go right. down the well, line. We mentioned it before work so well, I quit doing it. Yeah. Right. And so sometimes you need some help just with guidance, hey, I know what I should be doing, I just need you to hold me accountable. Or I used to know what I needed to do and now I just need you to remind me, right? Precisely. A lot of it isn't rocket science. Some of it is, I mean, I bet people haven't thought of our whole thing, we just went through the messaging and the lead magnet and the whole, that's radical for a lot of people, yes. It's mar that's marketing, it is, that is advanced marketing. It's not in marketing 101, that's marketing 505. I mean, that is, right. um, but, it's so simple to both of us because we're like, that's just normal. But right. you're right, a lot of people don't look at it that way. They think I'm supposed to make a brochure, go hand out a, a bunch of brochures, which by the way can work. Direct mail works. All these things work if you have the right message and you get the to right people message. at the right time and get right. it in front of the right audience. Yeah, exactly right. So. Exactly right. Well, that was good. So we started this thing saying, um, why do people hire me? Why do people hire you? Um, Basically, they hire you because you solve a problem for them and because you uh, have a success of dealing with people like me or people with my problem. They trust that you're going to fix their problem, yeah. Yeah, and knowing that in advance, us as the business owner, knowing that in advance, that's how we should present ourselves. I have a history. I'm going to give you peace of mind, Mr. Prospect, and I have a history of helping people like you be successful at whatever it is, fixing your hot spots fixing your teeth, you know, whatever the, whatever you're, but that message, when you speak their language, when you can articulate their problem better than they can, instant credibility, instant trust, instant close conversion, close the deal. Yeah. And one of the great ways to do that is when a client tells you their problem or, or asks you a question, 
you, you can say, of course, everybody says, well, that's a great question, but then tell a story of how you solve the problem for someone else. And, and what ends up happening is you answer all of those things we just talked about, right. creating that credibility, creating that trust by telling a story about someone else, creating that association and that, and you're showing the transformation in somebody else's life. And they, they're going to naturally say, I want that transformation. For myself. <laughs> That's me. I want that. Yeah. It's so That's pretty good. All right, man. Where can we find you, Mr. Mulvaney? Matt, you can find me at davidmulvaney.com and on LinkedIn, David, um, David Mulvaney, YouTube, David Mulvaney. So um, you Perfect. can find me all right. almost all over all any social media at David Mulvaney. If I'm not at David Mulvaney, there's a T in the middle. Sometimes my middle name's Thomas. So like Twitter, I'm David T. Mulvaney. But where can we find you, Matt? Yeah, so I got my coaching websites, 10X Profitability. No, 10XProfitBlueprint.com. I don't even know my website. 10xprofitblueprint.com. Don't we? Uh, I don't even know. And then, uh, you know, Matt Hudgens over at LinkedIn. So this is good, man. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure, Matt. We'll talk soon. See you.